Well, hello and welcome and welcome and hello. My name is Danny Deals. Thank you for tuning in to Un Poco Mas, the show where we give you just a little bit more. It is Monday, August 21st, 2023. And guys, I have a confession to make. I am a complete idiot. I don't understand charts or options flow or technical analysis or any of that uh, fancy jargon. Um, I just treat this whole thing like a casino, like one big joke. Um, Guys, I just want to lay out my investment philosophy. It is buy stocks when they're low, really good companies that are undervalued, and then only sell them when they're much, much higher, or they go on sort of irrational runs, um, extreme runs that I can say definitively are going to definitely pull back. Um, I think my reputation as sort of an irrational um, SoFi pumper uh, is undeserved because um, I've set out a price target of $13.75 when we reach net profit, which I believe will be announced uh, one month into 2024 for Q4 2023. Uh, I do not think that is all at all unreasonable or bullish. Um, if you look at Jeffries, you look at Truist, uh, you look at Mizuho, um, their targets right now are 15, 16, 15. Um, Citibank's target right now is 12. Um, my target right now is remains $9.75, uh, just where it's been uh, the last three quarters, just where it's been basically ever since uh, I started making YouTube videos. Um, my purpose in making these videos is just to get eyes on SoFi because when it was down in the fours and fives, I was just buying the hell out of it. Not just this time, but every time it's gone down to that level, I've been invested in uh, many SoFi units um, since the IPOE days, but I, I don't build a position all at once, guys. I've I've been doing this for decades. I know that stocks always come back to you, or most often they don't just run away and just go up forever. Um, you don't want to chase, guys. You do not want to chase um, stocks after a run-up. It is a recipe for losing money. It's a recipe for disaster. Um, if you chase on FOMO and you buy high, then you're going to end up panic selling when that stock drops from the 11s all the way down to uh, the low 8s. And yes, the um, the stock might have dipped, uh, did dip below eight, like pre-market um, one day. And there's some guy on here who's like, I don't know what's wrong with this person, but he takes that as like a personal um, accomplishment for himself. I've, I've never seen anything so ridiculous. Um but in any case, guys, so this was um, one of the first times in a long time that I've actually sold SoFi shares, and then uh, I bought a lot more back, and I've basically completed my flip as of today, and, uh, you know, it's been one hell of a ride, but um, guys, just want to look at what the SoFi um, technology stock did today, and I want all you guys that are so smart and you understand, just show me your trades, like... Show me when you bought, show me when you sold, so, you know, you can explain to me what I'm doing wrong and um, how I don't understand things. Um, I did study econ at a really good university, so I might understand a little bit more than I let on, but you you can be the judge of that. Um, a lot of these keyboard warriors have clearly, you know, never bought and sold anything, and they're, you know, I think a lot of them are just broke, angry virgins who... You, get upset when people express an opinion that they don't necessarily agree with. Um, whatever it might be, guys. Um, I have been bullish on the SoFi stock, but I don't think I've been irrational. Um, my my price target at this current time is $9.75. That's way below most of the good four and five star analysts. My reasoning is because they have not moved the needle on earnings per share. Um, the stock-based compensation is... Uh, you know, still very high as a percentage of the revenue, as a percentage of the EBITDA. And um, Noto and LaPointe have basically said that's probably only going to increase uh, next quarter. So, SoFi is not making money yet. I believe uh, once it makes a net profit and it does that consistently for a couple of quarters, uh, you will see a lot of institutions come into the stock 
and you will see the stock go up to that 14, 15, 16 dollar level that a lot of these analysts uh, have their price target set at right now. Um, but I'm not there yet. I, I really believe in management. I have a ton of my money, um, you know, locked up in the stock long term. Um, the fact that I flipped a small um, percentage of my shares is only um, because I've watched this stock, guys. I've watched it trade in that channel from the fours to eight um, for like 18 months. And then I've watched it, you know, go up from five to 10 almost uh, overnight. And then it's trading at 950 pre earnings. And the earnings report was the growth was good. The member growth was good, but they paid a lot for those members and they did not get any closer to making a net profit on an EPS basis. So there, you know, while I really do appreciate the deposit growth, the growth of the bank and the earnings report made me super confident for the long-term future of SoFi, you know, years out, it, it didn't make me at all confident that it was going to be able to hold any type of uh, massive gain. Like I was thinking if they cut, um, you know, the earnings per share loss to like two cents or one cent, um, you know, the stock would fly, but that just didn't happen, guys. They just met on the EPS um, estimate, which I thought was a little bit sandbag. I honestly expected them to beat. So I, when I saw the stock run up 20% and then run out of steam, guys, the writing was on the wall. And, um, you know, if you don't understand how to flip shares, I'm not going to try to tell you, I'm not going to try to like time that in real time for you. And, tell you exactly when to buy and sell stocks. This is not, you know, financial advice. And if you understand how to flip shares in the heat of the moment um, without any emotion, then you you don't need me, guys. You already know what you're doing. And I'm not here to try to lead any beginning people astray. And I'm not here to try to pump the stock and tell you to buy at 11. I'm just here to give you my honest opinion and you can uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, Taking a look at the options, guys, it's sort of the normal setup. Um, 13,000 uh, calls at $8.50 or at, uh, yeah, at $8.50, 5,000 at nine. And then below the, uh, you know, in the money right now is the $8 calls at 8,500. So this is how it always sets up. Like a lot of them just below the money, just in the money, and then a whole hell of a lot out of the money and then less one step up and, you know, less two steps up. And then you still have quite a few calls at 950. Um, I think that's a lot of hedging. I don't think really people are expecting the stock to just go crazy. Um, but if you look at, you know, the, the deterioration of the SoFi stock from the pump up into the 11s uh, over the last three weeks, it's just been following, you know, basically the NASDAQ down. And today the NASDAQ um, and a lot of stocks were, uh, you know, rallying. So it was up 1.56%. So the fact that SoFi was up like 1% is not um, necessarily a reversal. It's just basically saying SoFi is subject to the uh, whims of the market, whims of market makers, shorts, et cetera. There's a lot of forces pushing the SoFi stock around. And I think they will continue to have their way with the SoFi stock until we reach that um, gap net profitability that management assures us is coming in uh, Q4. Guys, just taking a look at the chart here, um, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. 813 is this, uh, 812, 813 is this yellow line. Um, why is that a critical level, guys? We've tested it, come up through it on um, June 8th, tested it on the 23rd, um, actually consolidated a few days, July 6, 7, and 8, then bounced off it again, did the run again through 10, um, consolidated back at 950 pre-earnings, pump and dump up past 11, all the way down, tested again, and now we have two green candles. Um, I wanna see another green candle, I'm not convinced. Um, I'm not convinced the market is done with this little uh, sell-off here. Not little. Uh, it's been pretty big if you're a SoFi uh, stockholder. But um, guys, if you just see this candle and you're at 955 and you see that ER, we're not any closer to uh, gap net profitability. Like the big news is deposit growth and uh, member growth. Um, but SoFi is paying for each one of those members. So I'm looking at this. I'm saying, okay. The stock just went from 950 to 1150 um, for no real discernible reason other than market makers are running a pump and dump. And that's why I flipped a small percentage of my shares 
Um, up here, I sold at an average of $11.44, um, sold about 9,000 shares, and then I bought back in mean, the mid to low eights for the most part. So I ended up with like 32, 3,300 uh, free SoFi shares. Um, just for um, doing what was pretty obvious to me. But anyway, guys, so we see this 813 level is key, and then we see this blue channel. Um, why is 813 uh, really critical? Well, if you look back here, it was a triple top of resistance when SoFi was running in this channel up to 8, um, that it was basically in from uh, April 2022 all the way to June 12th, uh, 2023. You see right here in May, tests eight here again in uh, August, test and consolidates a bit, pump and dump here, um, testing eight again on the earnings on uh, February 1st, and of course sells off as it always does. Nothing doing for this ER, this was the um, Chia Pet Army short attack. Then you have this massive, massive run up, goes right through eight in uh, June, and then it's tested now the bottom three times. Um, if we can bounce off the line here, this um, this channel for the third time, this $8.13 level, I think it's going to be definitively three tests to the upside, and this will be three tests to the downside. I like to think we could have flipped that line from resistance to support. Um, and then if you go back into the, the uh, channel here in these uh, blue lines, um, we've come back up into the channel. Yes, we fell below it, but we went way, way above it. Um, and we were in the short term downtrend for the last three weeks. Um, you can see basically guys, the stock price just rode along the lower side of this little channel flattened out right here, starting on, uh, basically August 10 flattened, flattened, flattened little bit more downside and now it's trying to come back up but there's absolutely no confirmation yet guys need another couple green candles need the market to tell us that this um, sell-off is over and that it's recognizing economic strength um, we have problems you know a lot of problems again with the um, real estate market in china talking about contagion um, just when the u.s uh, banking sector looked uh, fairly solid you know now we have uh some other issues coming on, and it is just a global economy, guys, but I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by these two green candles. Um, the stock has not really fallen anymore in the last week. Um, the, the, the negative trend in the stock has basically turned into flattening out over the last week, and we just have to see where it goes. It doesn't mean it's not going to you know, fall back down below 813 again, but I think it is trying to hold on. Um, which is a positive sign if you're um, looking to get back into this channel. You can see it a little bit better here, guys. Um, basically, short term, like $8.30 area has been a really key level. You can see the algo trading uh, today. Um, it's just been basically lower volume, a lot of algo in the stock. I think uh, consolidating, not really covering the short, guys. Um, that's one thing to note. Um, they are not really covering that short and, um, still sitting at about, uh, 14% of the, uh, of the free float. Now free float on loan again is way down. Shares on loan is down days to cover just finally ticked back up a little bit. It'd been going down and down and down. Um, same with, uh, utilization sort of flattening out. So I think the short long players have, covered what they're going to cover and now they're covering with long shares and um, that's why I think you see the odd uh, discrepancy in these numbers but if you head on over to the um, general news page uh, you can see even on this like weekly um, how key this 830 level is the stock's been playing around with it all week trying to break through three times broke through a little bit here on this weird algo stuff um, came all the way back down to eight and then back up to the 8.30 level, um, where it's just uh, trying to hold on right now. In fact, stock up $0.07 cents on the day to $8.29. Uh, flat after hours, 22 million shares traded. A very low volume there for the uh, SoFi stock. If you take a look, one of the things I've noticed lately in the financial media is just the uh, credibility they've been lending to SoFi. Like The other day, guys, I showed you an article, Investors Business Daily, um, 
they had SoFi in there with like AMD and, uh, you know, I forget what else it was, Tesla and like Google or something. They're like three stocks to buy. And I was like, Investor's Business Daily is pumping SoFi? Like, wow. Um, and then here, guys, Investor Place, which is normally uh, quite negative on, uh, or yeah, at least neutral to negative on SoFi and pretty much has been for a long, long time. Um, this is Thomas Young, um, certified financial analyst and five safe stocks to under $40 to buy immediately. Um, and they go through this guys. I mean, look at the stocks they're putting, uh, SoFi in with, I, this is really sort of the narrative changing based on the growth in the bank. I think is that they're going from this risky personal loan default to, you know, some of the more credible analysts and website are group, grouping SoFi in with some absolutely uh, blue tip giant or some blue chip giant uh, companies. A blue tip would be a totally different thing. Don't want to go there. Um, so Pfizer, they have Pfizer and they, I like Pfizer. Um, they explain why Pfizer is a good buy. Um, they have Intel in there. And of course, uh, SoFi, <laughs> Like what? SoFi, little um, eight billion market cap, little engine that could. Um, SoFi shares have pulled back in recent weeks, despite the firm announcing a beat and raise quarter. Q2 earnings came in well ahead of expectations, raised full year 2023 guidance to two billion adjusted net revenue, and the big thing was the adjustment in EBITDA, massive increase in their um, EBITDA guidance. It's why top investor place analyst Louis Navalier, who has been very bearish and on SoFi for a long time. And his team now sees uh, SoFi's $8 share price as a golden opportunity to buy. They note the Neo Bank likely remains on track to achieve the profit in Q4. Um, although it's far from certain how the stock will perform in the near term, as the long-term uh, growth potential of this financial services industry disruptor remains intact, the chances of higher prices for shares down the road remain very, very strong. Um, and guys, that's the thing. Financial services banking is so massive. These banks are so massive. SoFi can grow at a rapid rate, 25% per year for decades, and still not take a huge percentage of the market share. Like, the, you know, Chase and B of A and, you know, US Bank and all these other players. And then you get into worldwide players and you get into business banking. Um, there's so many areas that SoFi is just sort of scratching the surface on insurance, um, autos. I'm sure we'll get into auto lending. Um, I don't really like that business, but it, it is a loan. And SoFi really seems to like uh, lending money. Um, fundamentally, SoFi is a financial institution that uses uh, student loans as a loss leader. Yeah, that's, you know, they're drawing you into the flywheel of student loans. This year's results have shown the answer is yes. On uh, July 31st, SoFi revealed the number of checking and savings customers rose 47% year over year, vastly outpacing 6% student loans. Uh, rising interest rates would further push SoFi's net interest up 477% year over year. Uh, gets a B in Louis Navalier's uh, portfolio tracker and a C uh, Bank of America and a D to uh, Citigroup. So one of the highest rating banks there for old Louis Navalier. And um, you might know that guy. He's been a sort of a gadfly around investing for decades. I remember him from when I was a freaking kid. Um, Freeport McMoran, um, FCX. I don't really know this company. Evidently, they're a, um, I think, a copper miner. Um, so I, I really don't know a lot about uh, the raw materials sector. Shocker. I don't know anything about any sector. So you guys know that. Uh, hey, hey. Um, U.S. Bank Corp. So again, guys, U.S. Bank is one of the best... Um, one of the best banks you can buy. I would buy U.S. Bank um, ahead of any of these other uh, big banks, which I believe are overbought. Um, it's just a testament to SoFi that they're starting Investor Business Daily, Investor Place. They're starting to group them in with these uh, absolute blue chip stocks. I think the stock has been largely de-risked. Um, here's another article, August 21st, Seeking Alpha. SoFi Technologies, massive runway for growth, just getting started. Um, this is juxtaposed ideas. I don't really know who this guy is. Um, but it's talking again, the massive runway for growth. Um, you combine the growth in deposits, the growth in customers. They talk about conversion. They are noting that delinquency rates are up. So um, fair value of loans, um, 68, and unpaid principal balance, 49. Um, one thing I'll note, guys, is that unpaid principal balance uh, last quarter ending March 31st was only 38. So the rate of increase 
is actually larger in the unpaid principal balance than it is in the delinquency. So in absolute numbers, you could say, hey, the delinquency went up 10x from last year, but the unpaid principal uh, in, and this is in, uh, this is student loans versus personal loans. So you have to move over a little bit here, but the personal loans, the unpaid principal, um, last year in June was 8260. And then right now it's 50. So that's like more than six X and the delinquencies have not more than six X. They've like less than five X base, maybe around five X. So as a ratio of the unpaid principal balance, the delinquencies have actually gone down in the last year for personal loans. At least that's what my napkin math is uh, showing me. But um, perhaps some of you with uh, more brain cells to rub together could actually uh, do the math on that and get back to me. So they're talking about charge-offs. They're saying, okay, this is a big increase. And in absolute terms, it is. But if you talk about it as a ratio, it's really not. And um, if you looked at the earnings report and listened to uh, Noto and LaPointe, you'd see that um, charge-offs and stuff are well under the levels they plan for, though they are increasing with the massive increase in interest rates. You'd have to expect that even with a higher quality of buyer. Um, so then again, the elevated interest rate environment remained a net positive on performance. So then the net interest income is, is outweighing all this bullshit, guys. Attribute a growing net interest income of $291 million. 23% up quarter on quarter and 137% year on year, net interest margin of 5.74%. Much of this success is attributable to SoFi Bank's high return offerings, APOY of 4.5, added bonus. Um, the big banks aren't giving any of that. So basically SoFi is bribing these people to come into the system um, and they're paying a lot for these customers. There's no doubt, like SoFi has a high customer acquisition cost. I think it's still almost 300 bucks a customer, which I don't like that number. Um, therefore, due to the promising development thus far, unsurprising, uh, excellent performance, revenues 488, gap earning per share of uh, six cents um, to the negative. Most importantly, SoFi Bank has largely contributed profitability of the flywheel. That's there. They are growing the fly flywheel, guys, but it's just starting off. Um, combined with its highly sticky offerings across the bank, personal money, this is the key, guys. Once people are involved in this, they have credit cards, they have bank account, they have direct deposit, guys. These guys are not going anywhere. That's why deposits are continuing to grow at a rapid clip, and it will only accelerate from here. We know that more than 50% of newly funded money accounts setting up direct deposit uh, by day 30, and this had a significant impact on spending. Q2 annualized spend was over 2.7 times the full year 2022 spend, and in Q2 spend per average funded account was up 13% quarter over quarter. As a result, we believe SoFi has an immense runway for growth. Um, and you guys can go through the rest of this article. Um, it did meet immense resistance at the $10 range, uh, lost most of its gains, combined with elevated short interest of 14% at the time of this writing. Um, stocks uh, current retest at the Q3 2023 levels of the eights. Maybe even more volatility in the year, near term. Then again, we are maintaining our buy rating for SoFi attributed to the tailwinds um, from student loan refinancing, raised guidance revenues to two billion and adjusted EBITDA of three hundred and thirty-eight million compared to prior guidance of two seventy-eight. Guys, so raising um, guidance almost sixty was at sixty-four million dollars on EBITDA, which would represent plus ninety-four percent uh, year over year. Um, with most of its second half numbers heavily weighted to favor uh, Q4 2023, it is apparent management is expecting higher contribution from student loan financing with things likely picking up in 2024. It's unsurprising given payments will restart. In addition, and you talk about consensus EBITDA, strong um, uh, EBITDA is expected, EBITDA per share is expected to grow, expanding at a tremendous CAGR of 40.57%. This suggests a long-term stock price target of $12.20 based on the sector's EV EBITDA valuation of 12.2x. As a result of the attractive risk-reward ratio, investors may continue adding the SoFi stock depending on their dollar cost averaging. And guys, um, can't really argue with um, any of the sentiments there. Uh, we do have to keep our eye on the student, um, on the personal loan delinquencies, um, 
I just don't think they look too bad so far. This last ER, they they were actually down um, quarter over quarter if you look at it as a ratio of the loans themselves. Now, in absolute terms, yes, they're going to be going up a lot, but look at student loans, guys. The unpaid balance has, um, you know, like I said, from June 30, 2022 to June, June 30, 2023, um, the, uh, the unpaid balance went up like six, over 6%. So, you know, the fact that um, delinquencies went up five times and, you know, the loans went up six times actually means that delinquencies are dropping even in the last year. Um, so guys, I did tell you, um, and I've been very upfront about this. Um, I don't recommend people time the market, but I've flipped SoFi shares over and over. I don't flip all my shares, but you know, whenever this stock's gone back down below five, um, you know, I buy the hell out of it. Then when it heated up to eight, I'll maybe sell a few. If it, you know, pumps way up and then I'll buy more back at, you know, six. And that's how I've been able to build a massive um, profit in the SoFi position. So for all the people that are teaching me, you know, what to do, I flipped a small portion of my shares. Um, I sold 9,000 shares at a uh, average of... Uh, I sold 9,000 shares at an average of $11.46. So I netted $103,000. Um, and um, then basically I bought those shares back at an average of about $8.43. Um, so I bought back around 12,300 shares. So I basically ended up with um, 3,300 uh, free shares of SoFi without paying a, a dime. Um, just, But I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I don't know about charts. I don't know about options flows. I just know about making immense amounts of money because my emotions don't exist. I'm a robot. Um, I just buy low and I sell high. That's how stupid I am. So I'm buying in the fives, guys. Thousands and thousands and thousands. I, I just took my SoFi account because you're allowed to take screenshots on SoFi. It's so easy, but I have SoFi in like four accounts. But anyway, guys, I was buying the hell out of this stock um, in the low fives. You can see, you know, 350 shares, 360 shares, 275 shares, 350 shares. Um, this was a free SoFi shares, but 350 shares. I bought 21, uh, 2,150 shares at $5.32. Um, just more and more shares, 680 shares, $5 and 31, 335 shares, 340 shares, 340 shares, 150 shares, um, 210 shares, 525 shares. It just, you know, guys, it's, it's on and on. Um, and then I'm buying in the fours, 220 shares, 210 shares, 250 shares, 200. And this is just a few days example. And then these are where I sold some of my shares on uh, SoFi. And again, I've completed uh, repurchasing all of these shares. And if the stock drops some more, um, that doesn't bother me over time. Um, I'm making a ton of money. Uh, I have a massive, massive SoFi position. Like I said, I just picked up another um, 3,300 shares uh, absolutely for free uh, just because I'm so stupid and I don't know what I'm doing. But guys, I was not encouraging any of you guys to be buying um the SoFi stock after that 20% run, I think you would have been very, very foolhardy to do so. Um, but it is what it is, guys. And so did I sell a few SoFi shares? Yeah, I sold a few of my shares. Um, and then I bought a hell of a lot more back and I remain uh, fully invested and fully committed to SoFi. But for all you guys who are so much uh, smarter than me, just just post some of your trades. Um, you know, just just show them, guys. Just show them. Show, show your trades, okay? All you smart guys out there who just understand charts and, you know, you understand the options flows and all that stuff. I'm here to learn, guys. I want to learn from all you guys because all I do is just, just sit back like a fool with five-year-old charting capabilities and just make money uh, hand over fist uh, year after year, decade after decade, Um I don't care if the run was Amazon or Tesla or what it was. I just buy great companies when they're uh, tremendously undervalued. When they run too hard, I sell and I flip the shares back to a lower value and I just get um, a bunch of free shares. And that's how I buy, um, you know, tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of SoFi shares. And um, 
even with the recent pullback, I remain up, I think, 70% or something because um, I average down hard, guys, and that's just how I do it. Um, in any case, guys, been going on forever. It is uh, August 21st. It's a Monday. It's 3.16 p.m. out here in a beautiful Los Angeles. Um, I have uh, more SoFi shares than I even know what to do with, and I couldn't be happier. I'm like a proud papa of all my SoFi shares. I love all of them equally. Um even little Peppy and Pedro. I love you guys. And also, I am wearing my uh, stock Karen shirt today. I need to speak with the manager. My name's Karen. Um, but you guys already knew that. If you listen to me, you know I'm a massive, massive Karen. So, guys, um, it's a SoFi stock. The ticker symbol is SOFI. Um, yes, I sold a few shares, but um, there weren't. Uh, it's not a huge part of my position. And I bought even more back. So, I just couldn't be happier. Um, you know, a lot of you guys, I've already said that I did this in a lot of YouTube and forum comments and people will go, oh my God, you didn't tell me you were doing this. Guys, I can't explain the birds and the bees to you. Um, you either knew how to do that in advance or you didn't. So I can't teach you everything um, in the middle of a pump and dump, guys. I'm just uh, not that smart and capable. As you know, I am uh, fairly charming, but um, only to uh, people who really get to know me, not you internet freaks. Guys, it's Un Poco Moss. Thanks for watching. I'm Danny Deals. I got a ton of SoFi and all you punk ass bitches that want to teach me stuff, go ahead and uh, post your trades, okay? I'll wait.